Okay. So how are you? There are 143 participants here, including the lecturers. How are you guys? You can respond in the chat room. Good. All right. Okay. Uh, stay safe, everyone. So, um, first of all, I would like to thank all of you to uh, because of your commitment to attend this uh, virtual lab session. And uh, for your information, we have to do this virtual lab session uh, because uh, due to the pandemic, right? We have uh, you no. Know, um, some of you, you know, have met me. You have uh, met me in the in the lab, right? We have uh, physical lab session previously. So uh, for a student of um, uh, chemical and energy engineering SKT, uh, how many times to have uh, entered the lab? We have performed the lab session. If I am not mistaken, uh, two times, right? One time, only one lab session. Yes, doctor. Another one is for briefing. Yes, of course. The one is for briefing, and another one is for the experiments. And how about the uh, uh, for information? We have two um, uh, faculty here. We from faculty of engineering. We have uh, students from. Uh, if I'm not mistaken, you are from the uh, <clears throat> um, bachelor of uh, engineering. Um, uh bio biotechnology right oh bioengineering right s e t b or am i correct by process sorry bio process right and some of you are from uh, pure chemical engineering i think one or two uh, from you guys and then um another faculty is faculty of science we have from the students from um, biology department okay <clears throat> bachelor of science um, <clears throat> biology and also uh, bachelor of science industrial biology right so uh, for your information we have to do this uh, okay uh, um, before that for biology students how many times we have performed the lab session one also one or two i think one right all right so for all students we have performed only one lab session because for uh, engineering students uh, they have entered two times in the lab but for the first time is for briefing and another another second time is for the experiment but for the uh, biological students we have performed the briefing during the online session right and then uh, the first lab session is for the first experiment so all of you have performed only one experiment right all right according to the uh, ministry of uh, higher education they have uh, give us an, an advisory note that we have to perform this kind of lab session due to the pandemic we have to we have to complete this course, whatever uh, no, the situation is, and this is the solution after we have discussed with the faculty, all right, and um, and according to the advisory note by the Ministry of Higher Education, so we need to do this virtual lab session. So what we're gonna do, what we're gonna do right now, okay? There is me, uh, Dr. Faizan Abdullah. There's also uh, Dr. Naji Arafat here. Dr. Naji, are you here, right? Yes, I'm Dr. Here. Okay, Dr. Najis there and also uh, Dr. Hasmiria. Dr. Hasmiria, are you there? Yes, I can see Dr. Hasmiria here. Okay, in the participants. All right. So, um, we have uh, four experiments to be completed, right? Even though you have performed one experiment, all right, but... Um, um, because we do the experiment alternately for each group so that we have to do uh, the virtual lab session for all experiment one, two, three, and four. And for experiment one is today, right? Um, Monday, 6th of September, 2021. And for experiment two is tomorrow on Tuesday, um, 7th of September, 2021. And for the third experiment is on this coming Wednesday, um, uh, 8th of September 2021 and for the last one experiment 4 will be held on uh, Thursday um, 6, 7, 8, 9 of September 2021 so uh, some of you have done experiment 1, some of you have done experiment 2, 3 and 4 so um, as I told you in the uh, uh, 
um, our chat uh, in our WhatsApp group. For those who have attended any of the experiments, so you are not com compulsory to attend the virtual lab session for that experiment. For example, you have done experiment one. So for this lab, uh, for this virtual lab, you are not compulsory to attend, right? But you can attend. It's okay for your, uh, you know, extra knowledge and so on, right? And uh, for the lab session that you have not uh, performed yet, you are compulsory to attend the virtual lab session. All right? Uh, understood, guys? If you understood, give me thumbs up. Right? Okay, good. Meaning that you are listening. But uh, can I ask you something? You know, I only see, I only see your name here, but please open your um, camera so I can see you. Because I feel that I, I'm talking alone, alone here, right? Can you open your camera so, get, so that I can see you, okay? I really miss my students. <laughs> uh, really, Dr. Naji? Yeah, betul. Yes, betul. So for, uh, for those who can open your camera, right, please open your camera so that we have a really good, okay, uh, a two-way communication. Saya tak cuci rambut. Oh, yeah, I, I, I can't smell your hair here. It's okay. <laughs> right. So for this virtual lab session, we have done the um, a video shooting, right? Uh, for the real experiments that uh, you you need to perform in the lab. So we have done the video shooting, doing the real experiment, all right, in the lab. And then today we will show you the video of that experiment that we have, no, we have shoot and then we, we we have do some editing in the video, right? After this, you will hear a, a, a golden voice of Dr. Naji, <laughs> right? And then um, uh, uh, it is uh, the purpose is to to let you uh, know the situation of the experiments in the real way, it, um, even though it is only for you know a virtual lab. But you know what is the step need to be taken, right? Um, and then what is the you know the chemicals the apparatus that you need to use during the experiment? All right. So um, for today we will do experiment one. Okay. And um, as I told in the group, okay, you you will watch today. You will watch and you will uh, hear explanation from us on the experiment, right? And after this, okay, uh, I will uh, upload by today after this rightly after this experiment the simulation result of the experiment. So you need to do the lab report according to the simulation result. Okay, similar for all of you, the same result. You need to do the uh, the lab report, but it is uh, uh you know depend on your group. Right, how you do the lab report, how you discuss, you have you, you already know what is the rubric for the lab report because uh, in your lab manual you have everything there. What is need to be um, explained in the lab report? Uh, actually, during our lab briefing also we have uh, explained very well what is needed in your lab report. Okay, but for now you you only watch how to do the experiment. Okay, uh, you can ask question and then um, also. Um, we can do uh, you know a uh, two-way communication you can ask us we can ask you right and then um rightly after this virtual lab i will give in the um, e-learning the simulation result for you to uh, perform the uh, to, uh, for you to complete the lab report and then you need to submit the lab report okay um for this week we have a four experiment until this coming thursday and then you have 10 days all right until 20 uh, until 20 of September to submit all the lab report, three of your lab report, right? You have performed one, you have submitted one, right? Am I correct? Okay, so you need to submit the another three lab report after this, okay? Um, before or the last date on 20th of, 20th of September. And then give us some time to mark your lab reports and we will uh, announce your result in the uh, aims okay oh you are very happy now very smiley face thumbs up you know okay uh for today um as i told you we will do the uh, first experiment which is experiment one uh dr hasmiria if uh, if they cannot hear the sound of the video can i ask you to uh, share the video I will give you the link. I have already uploaded the experiment one video in the YouTube. Thank you, 
me the link, uh, the new link. Okay, I will provide the link. Okay, okay, Dr. Haas, I will provide the link. All right, before the lab session begin with the video, I would like to um, explain a little bit on the first experiments using the lab manual. I have told you to, to uh, ready with the lab manual, right? You have it with, uh, with you, guys? Even if it's a soft copy or hard copy. All right, you have it? All right, good. Okay, some of you have done this experiment. Okay, can I know? Uh, may I know who, who have done this experiment and you attend this lab session again? Who have done it? Or oh, none of you? Who have done it? Okay. Remember Why your lab Yana, okay. Shafiq said yes. Uh, Shafiq and Yana, you have done this experiment? Shafika? Oh, you? Oh, no, okay. They answer the my my previous question. Uh, oh, ready okay, with sorry. the uh lab manual. Okay. All right. For the first experiment, we're gonna do the a uh, gravimetric determination of nickel. Right. What is nickel? Okay. Uh, guys, you can open your mic, and uh, we have a two-way communication. What is nickel? Nickel is metal. Right. What is nickel? Okay, please. We have a two-way communication. Guys, you can open your mic, guys. Okay. It is the gravimetric determination of nickel. So, uh, what is gravimetric? It is the uh, traditional method of analysis. Uh, we determine uh, our analyte using based on the... Based on what? Based on the weight of the... Uh, compound right we do the precipitation mass okay uh, based on the mass and then we do uh, the precipitation and then we measure the mass all right and then um based on some calculation we can determine how much is our um uh, analyte okay for today the first experiment experiment one okay the the, the analyte is the nickel right so uh the d dmgh okay, dimethyl gly uh, glyoxime, right? Uh, an organic precipitant used to uh, determine the nickel uh, using the um, precipitation process, right? So um, we have the apparatus used is sintered glass crucibles, uh, suction filtration unit, uh, desiccators, uh, volumetric flask, um, pipettes, beakers, uh, hot plates, and litmus paper. Okay, for the chemical, we have the uh, DMGH itself, the, the uh, precipitants, right? The organic precipitant, the chemical that we use to precipitate the nickel. And then we have ammonium hydroxide uh, diluted, right? We have a, a concentrated nitric acid, and then we have a urea, and then we have an unknown stock solution. This is unknown stock solution, right? Um, the, the, the sample that we need to determine how much the nickel inside it, right? And then we have an oxalic acid. Okay, to clean the crucible. All right, all right. Uh, I believe that some of you or most of you have, uh, you know, a limited skill in using this apparatus, right? In handling the chemicals. Uh, for that, we have uh, provide a basic skill in handling the pipette, all right? And handling how to do the titration, okay? And also how to do the uh, how to use the analytical balance. We provide it in a basic basic skill uh, uh, video. Also will be provided in the uh, e-learning, right? What I'm gonna do after this, um, after the I after I have uploaded the video in the e-learning, okay, you have to mark whether you have complete watching the video or not, right? Um, the uh, you know uh, I have to ensure that you have watched the video in the e-learning after you mark you have done watching it, right? You only can mark the the you know the the uh, you only can, can mark after you watch the video. This I uh, have the setting in the e-learning so that after you watch the video only, you can mark you have done watching the video. 
right? I hope so. You do that, guys. All right? Because we are not explaining the basic skill in, in our lab session for in, uh, in these four days. But we, uh, we will provide the, the video in the e-learning so that you can watch and you mark you have done watching it. Right? Understood? Give me thumbs up. Open the mic, guys. We have two-way communication, as I told you. You are 100. We have 140 here. So, please. Uh, I, I, I don't think so that 140 of you, 140 of you have a mic problem, right? Please open your mic and respond. Okay, um, I think uh, now Dr. Asmira, we can uh, start uh, showing them the virtual lab video. Okay, ready guys? Dr. Faizwan, I think yes. before we begin the video, um, it is always nicer if we can, uh, the student can understand why we do yeah. gravimetric analysis. All right. Okay. And why nickel in water? In what context is this analysis going to be useful for them? So this is something that can be appreciated more so that they can learn more. Okay, Dr. Naji, you can handle that. <laughs> no problem. Okay. okay guys. Okay, guys. Um, I, I pass to Dr. Naji. All right. Okay. No problem. Okay, guys, have you ever heard about gravimetric? Tell me sincerely. Have you ever heard about gravimetric analysis? It's now right or wrong answer. It's okay. If you have not heard about it, you tell me. Have you guys heard about it? Yes, doctor. Okay. What do you know about it? What do you know about gravimetric? It's okay. I'm not going to give you marks. You can tell me what do you know about gravimetric. I'm here to to I mean to enable the process. Okay. What do you know about gravimetric? Quantitative analysis. Good, right? So, what sort of quantitative analysis is that? Okay, Ahmad Mohaimin, please answer. Ahmad Mohaimin, I want to hear from Ahmad Mohaimin. Answer Dr. Najib's question. Okay, please, Ahmad Mohaimin, what sort of quantitative analysis is that? Analyzing the amount of liquid produced. Uh, this is the experiment, but my question is, what is actually gravimetric? Right? It's okay if you can't answer in English, you can speak in Malay, I can understand. No problem. If you want to catch a clutter, also can, no problem. Yes, all language. <laughs> okay, tell me. What do you understand? Because you are going to be a professional. A professional that needs to know the fundamental. You are not going to be a technician, right? Somebody else may perform the job for you, but you must understand the principle and why you do things. Now, why are you doing this? Any idea? Kalau tak ada idea, cakap tak ada idea. And I'll explain. Any okay, idea? Okay, um, Chiam Kai Zian, please respond. I will pick some names here today. We will pick some names. No idea. Okay, Chiam has, has no idea. That's okay. my, that, that is actually my worry, okay? I understand that many of you, you just simply do the experiment without knowing why you are performing the analysis, right? So this is why we are going to do this kind of discussion first. Number one, okay, you have to understand that gravimetric analysis is a quantitative analysis. That is true. Quantitative means it has numbers. The weight, for example, right? So gravimetric is actually the process where you convert something, right, into another thing that can be separated out. Katakanlah, okay, nickel, Actually, one of the putih, putih, you can't see it, right? But by reacting nickel with something like DMGH, you will transform nickel into something that you can see, right? And because you can see, now you can separate, okay? Then because you can separate, now you can imbang, you can weigh the amount. So that is actually gravimetric. It's actually a quantitative analysis whereby you convert something into something else that you can separate out. So that is gravimetric, okay? 
we have so many different quantitative analysis, right? And gravimetric analysis is one of them. Okay, so it is the simpler one, right? So now why are we looking at nickel? Simple reason, because nickel is present in many anthropogenic exposure kind of contamination to the water. It can come from soil, okay? It can come from uh, pipings and all. So the high concentration of nickel would indicate anthropogenic kind of exposure or there is something wrong with your piping that you need to rectify. If you are the engineer now, now you have a lot of nickel and you know that there must be something wrong with your piping and you can do intervention. So that is the reason why we need to quantitatively determine nickel in water. Now, do you get my point? Do you get my point? Right. Okay, so sekarang ni berbaloi tak kenapa kita nak buat eksperimen ni sekarang ni. Setelah kita dah tahu apa itu gravimetrik dan kenapa kita kena buat analisis nikel. Nikel ni tak nampak dengan mata asal kita dalam air tu. That's why kita kena convert into something yang kita boleh nampak. Okay, clear? Are you guys clear about that? Okay, yes, very good. Sir. Okay, now then we can proceed with the experiment after knowing it. Tak guna bawa kereta tak tahu tujuan ke mana, right? Okay, all yours, Dr. Asmira. Okay, I pass it Dr. Haas to play the video. So guys, please uh, pay your attention, uh, listen carefully to the, uh, to the, you know, uh, to the video that we have, we will uh, show after this. And uh, if you have your jota book now, please, uh, you know, uh, put some notes there about this experiment. After this, you will do the lab report. So you will hear something that you are, uh, you know, uh, it is important for your lab report after this. Okay, I pass it to, to Dr. Haas. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi taala wabarakatuh and very good morning. My name is Dr. Faizwan bin Abdullah. I'm currently a senior lecturer at the Faculty of Science, University of Technology, Malaysia. Today, I would like to demonstrate to you how gravimetric determination of nickel can be attempted. I would like to explain the basic principle first. Dimethylglyoxin or DMGH is an organic precipitant principally used to determine nickel. The MGH selectively reacts with nickel at a controlled pH of between 5 and 11. The formation of chelates between the nickel to ion and the MGH can be written as follows. The MGH is almost insoluble in water and is aided in the form of a 1% solution in 90% ethanol. 1 ml of this solution is sufficient for the precipitation of 0. 0.0025 gram of nickel. The precipitate form is so bulky that the presence of a very small amount of nickel can be handled conveniently. Nickel is normally precipitated by adding the MGH reagent to a hot acidic solution of nickel 2 ion, which is then made basic by addition of ammonia. Only a slight excess of the reagent should be used since the MGH is not very soluble in water or in very dilute ethanol and may precipitate if very large excess is needed. Now, I would like to show you the apparatus as well as the chemicals required for performing this analysis. As you can see, we require quite a lot of things on our table now. First, we require the use of concentrated nitric acid. Here it is, concentrated nitric acid. Then we require the use of DMG in alcohol. We also require the use of urea, ammonium hydroxide in dilute form, Nickel sample solution, 
litmus papers, several volumetric flasks, a thermometer, synthet glass crucibles, a desiccator with silica in it, beakers and distiller, pipette fitting and the pipette itself, as well as the washing bottles. Now, the first step of doing this experiment is by pipetting 50 ml of nickel sample solution into a 100 ml volumetric flask. Dilute to the mug with distilled water followed by mixing the mixture thoroughly. So this is how we are going to do it. Now, I am going to pipette 50 ml of nickel sample solution. You have to measure accurately. Focus on the meniscus level so that you get the accurate amount of, of volume that you require. It can be a little bit tricky somehow, but you need to get to the meniscus. Well, you can see it can be a little bit difficult to get the volume, but now I get it. So, I'm going to transfer this um, 50 milliliter of nickel sample solution that I have pipetted into the calibrated volumetric pass. 100 milliliter for the calibrated volumetric pass to be precise. Upon completion of transferring the sample into the volumetric flask, the next step is to dilute it using distilled water up to the 100 mark for the volumetric flask. You have to do it very carefully and the final step, perhaps you may want to use dropper to drop little amount of uh, distilled water to the volumetric flask so that you can get accurate representation. Ah, uh, finally. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to mix it thoroughly by flipping the um, volumetric pass like this up and down for several times to ensure homogeneity of the solution. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to transfer this solution into a beaker. And from this beaker, I am going to pipette 
to 25 milliliter of each of the solution into three different 250 milliliter beakers for the subsequent steps. Now, I'm going to demonstrate to you how I'm going to transfer 25 milliliter of the solution into the beakers. Look carefully, accuracy is very important, especially when you look at the measurement. Then, add 100 ml of distilled water to each of the beaker, followed by heating it to approximately 80 degrees centigrade. You have to check the temperature to make sure that the solution has reached that particular temperature by using a thermometer. And when you do so, please make sure that you rinse the thermometer to ensure that you are not going to move out any solute from the solution that would affect the accuracy of the determination in subsequent step. So, right, okay, guys. Now we are doing the heating process, right? Okay, now uh, you can see that there's a hot plate there. Okay, the temperature is quite high, right? So what is the precaution step that I need to use uh, to avoid that uh, something, uh, you know, injury happen? It is a heat hazard, okay? It is an, uh, a, a hazard in the lab, one of the hazards in the lab. And what is the precaution step that I need to use to ensure that I will not be injured while using the hot plate? Can I, anybody, or I pick the name? Nurul Hajaratul Aswad. Oh, a very good name. Yes, doctor. Yes. Okay. I use power. Precaution step. Use what? Towel. Towel to to uh to avoid what uh where what you can do with the towel. Um, to re to remove the beaker, I think. Okay. To hold the beaker, uh, if it is hot, okay. right? Okay. Good. Uh. Okay. And also, we have a glove. If you have glove in the lab, you use glove, right? A yeah, towel, good one from Hajar to Aswad. Okay. And also, you can see in the video, right, that have been paused by Dr. Haas, I'm holding the uh, th a mercury thermometer, right, to measure the heat uh, of the solution. Okay. So, um, can I stir the solution using? The mercury thermometer because it's look like stirrer, right? The, the, we can use the two in one. So I want I want to ask uh, Bupa uh, anak perempuan pian Bupa, can I stir the solution using the thermometer, the mercury thermometer? No, okay, Bupa. No, why? Why, Bupa? Can you explain? Can you explain why I can't stir the solution using the mercury thermometer? You know why? Or you don't know? You just say don't know. <clears throat> the mercury will react. You mean that the 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 bar. 
uh, of uh, the you know the glass bulb that contains mercury will broke you mean the mercury will uh, come out from the thermometer it will be broke right the thermometer will be broken right okay actually it, it uh, the mercury will react that is the first one but the first the the then the second one the first one yes the thermometer pecah then the dangerous mercury will come out thank you to sim okay s i m sim but you 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 text me privately you chat privately sim okay so i tell everyone sim answer that thermometer will uh, broken okay the uh, kirtana ganesh also answer that the thermometer will broken because it is very fragile okay so I only use a thermometer to measure the temperature of the solution, not to stir the solution because it contains mercury hazard. Okay. And you can see that Dr. Haas show us, right? Uh, at the, you know, uh, bottom of the mercury thermometer, we have a, a mercury uh, containers or in the glass bulb that will... Uh, will use to detect the heat okay and then we measure the temperature so it is very fragile and we have to be very careful while using the mercury thermometer if it will it uh, if it is broken so it will provide a chemical hazard all right so we will use it very careful okay so we cannot stir the solution using the thermometer the mercury thermometer okay the bulb containing mercury right is very fragile and dangerous. Okay. All right. Thank you, guys. So I hope you understand. I will stop. We will stop the video uh, wherever we want to ask you the questions regarding the uh, safety and also the technical questions so that you understand. All right. Thank you. And Dr. Haas, you can uh, resume back the video. This step is very important for you to follow. Upon completion, the step can be repeated to the remaining two because that contain the sample solutions. Now, I'm checking the solution to make sure that 80 degrees centigrade has been achieved. It appears that the solution has reached that temperature that we wanted. Now, the next step, I'm going to add 10 milliliter of DMG solution into the solution while maintaining at high temperature. Can you stop a while? Right. I'm surprised actually you guys never asked why 80 degrees Celsius, eh? Why not 70? Why not 90? Why not 100? Any answer? Any answer? Anybody wants to try? Optimum temperature, what does it mean? Can it perform at lower temperature, say for example, 60 degrees Celsius? Can we perform that at that temperature? Okay, but can we perform at 60 degrees Celsius? So the answer is actually you can, right? The range of temperature for this kind of experiment is between 60 to 85 degrees Celsius, right? So 80 degrees Celsius is the optimum temperature. To understand this, you must understand entropy, right? Read your notes about entropy. 
the reaction at high temperature between the DMGH and the nickel. Right? Thank you. Before the DMG can be transferred into the solution, the DMG must be measured first to ensure the accuracy of the amount. Now, after I'm getting the amount that I'm wanted, I'm transferring 10 ml of DMG into the beaker, followed by stirring. Now you can see the color has changed. Next, I'm going to check if the mixture has turned into acidic form. I'm going to use a litmus paper to do that. If the solution is not yet acid, I'm going to add concentrated nitric acid dropwise until it becomes so. This is how I'm going to do that. Well, as you can see here, after checking the solution with the litmus paper, it appears that the solution is not yet acidic. So it is imperative for me now to drop to add uh, the concentrated nitric acid by dropwise. Uh, where is my concentrated nitric acid? Here it is. Now I'm going to add dropwise of this nitric acid into the beaker I and mean, then I'm going to stir it for a while and then I'm going to check whether the pH has turned acidic. Well, using this litmus paper, it can be seen that the solution has turned into acidic condition. That is fantastic. The next step is to add 3 grams of urea into the beaker followed by stirring again. And then the mixture can be boiled for 2-3 to three minutes and cool to room temperature for the subsequent process. Now, here how it can be done. Let me show you guys. After adding the urea and stirring, followed by heating it to about two to three minutes, now it's time for us to cool it down. You have to repeat the step for the remaining two because that contain the um, sample solution. Now, I'm going to check my crucibles. It is important that crucibles to be used 
it must be washed with oxalic acid and rinse using distilled water and let to dry in an oven at approximately 1 degree Celsius. Well, I have my sintered crucible in this oven already. Now, what I'm going to do is, I'm going to remove them and place in a desiccator, close it and bring the, des uh, bring the crucible for weighing. Now, this is how I'm going to remove it. Be careful, it's very hot. Okay, uh, Dr. Haas, yeah. can you pause now, for a while? Let's go. Okay, guys. Okay, um, why I need to put the uh, uh, crucible uh, after heating it in the um, in the oven, okay, inside the desiccator, right? In the desiccator, it contains the uh, silica gel, right, uh, at the bottom of the desiccator. So what is the purpose? Uh, remember, we are doing gravimetric analysis now. So, relate it. Why I need to use the desiccator? In fact, it is uh, it contains nothing yet. It just heated, and after after heated, I put it in the desiccator, right? If you uh, didn't hurt or didn't uh, use the desiccator before this, it is a closed um, container that contains silica gel at the bottom of the desiccator. So. From your idea, what is the purpose of uh, using the desiccator? Um, who are gonna ask? Um, uh, Chong Tai Sun. Okay. Uh, before that, uh, got some answer in the chat room. Okay. Um, to to absorb water, prevent any reaction with water. Right. Silica gel, absorb humid. All right, we have a lot of answer, but I need to hear from Chong first. What is your idea, Chong? Uh, yes, the silica gel inside the desiccator will absorb the excess water, even though it is already in the oven, but then the moisture is still there. All right, good, good answer from Chong and everyone in the chat room. Okay, because it will absorb the moisture from the ambient air right because we are doing the gravimetric analysis we have to be very careful with the um uh, you know with the uh, error okay uh, with the uh, re any reaction that um not from the experiment to avoid uh, you know the 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 undesired reaction between our um uh, our sample our rectants with the ambient air because the, in our ambient air, we have moisture. So that we need to put it in the desiccator so that uh, uh, in the desiccator that there is no contact with the ambient air, right? You can watch in the uh, image that Dr. Haas has shown us, okay? And the silica gel will absorb the, uh, any moist, any, any moist from the air. And then so that we can ensure that our uh, crucibles are free from the uh, outside um moist okay that can disturb the wigging process okay good okay meaning that you understand all right thank you and we can resume the experiment thank you Dr. Haas. next step is to weigh the crucible and i'm going to weigh each and every crucible using this weighing balance one by one so make sure that your wing balance is actually working accordingly it's step to zero now i'm removing the first crucible from the desiccator and i'm going to transfer that on the wing balance careful make sure that you place the crucible at the center of the wing balance and then close the lid now Wait until the number becomes constant. Wait, wait, look at the number. Right? So it's still moving. Wait until it stops. Okay, now you can see that it is stopping and the wing where the, the weight of the first crucible is 5.129 grams. 
Right, I'm going to record that and transfer back the first closer bolt into the desiccator, followed by the second one. Same procedure, now let us wait for the number to become constant. Yes, the way of this second crucible is 5.079 grams. Right, so now I'm removing back the crucible into the desiccator followed by weighing the third crucible. Careful. Now I'm moving up the, sec the third crucible into the weighing balance. Okay, so the weight is 5.0977 grams. Okay, now we have done measuring the weight of these three crucible. So I'm going to bring the crucible back into the desiccator for the subsequent step. Now, the next step is to add diluted ammonium hydroxide into the cool samples. I'm going to add this ammonium hydroxide dropwise until no further formation of red coloration upon mixing with the solution mixture. I'm going to do this for all the three replicates. This is how I'm going to do it and please make sure that you stir them well. Now, I'm turning on this filtration unit. I'm going to filter the uh, replicate, each of the replicate, through the weight sintered crucible using the suction filtration. I'm going to run some distilled water through the crucible to wash the precipitate in order not to miss any salute from the calculation later on. So this is very important to ensure that you have as accurate result as possible. Okay, Dr. Haas, can you pause the video for a while? 
All right, guys. Um, why we need to do this uh, a filtration process using this suction filter? Anybody can give can give your idea? Why we need to do this? Faster, all right. Uh, of course, we it is faster using the suction filter, right? But why why we need to filter? After we do the reaction, right? We heat and then we we can see the precipitants, right? Why we need to do the um, the filtration process? Anyone? Obtain the key late. All right, good. Anyone? Uh, other than uh, Mohamed answer? Good, Mohamed. Uh, Anis Sofia, are you there? Anis? Okay, Siti Aisha to get the precipitate. All right, good. Right, because we do the um gravimetric analysis we need to have we need to obtain the precipitate and then we we, we need to measure the weight all right uh, from there we can know the uh to we can determine how much is the analyte in this case what is our analyte what is our analyte guys Nickel, right? At the end of this experiment, we can measure how much the nickel is in the sample. All right, good. Thank you. And uh, Dr. Haas can resume the video. Thanks. Phew, done with the filtration. Now, let us hope that my microwave works perfectly. So the next step is we have to dry the crucible in this microwave using medium power for about four minutes before cooling it down in a desiccator and followed by weighing again. We have to repeat this process twice or more until we have reached the constant weight. So, Please bear aware that handle hot crucible with tongs or towels. Place crucible in desiccators between weighing. So these steps are very important. After the crucibles have reached or cooled to room temperature, now it's time to measure the weight. Right. I'm going to 
measure the weight for every single crucible in this desiccator. I'm going to measure it and then record the reading. I have to repeat this process, the drying and weighing process, at least two or three times until the constant weight can be achieved. After getting can you all the, the correct values, now it's time for us to do some calculation to determine the concentration. Mr. Has, of can you can you pause the video for a while? Okay, um, guys, um, if you heard that Dr. Naji uh, explained in the video, I need to uh, we need to dry and wait again for several time. Okay, we need to let the um, the uh, crucible to cool in the desiccator. Okay, it is a simple question. Uh, it is also related uh, to the process that we we need to put the desiccator previously. So why we need to let the crucible to cool inside the desiccator? Why we uh, why we can uh, why we can uh, just weigh it uh, during it is hot. <clears throat> Okay. Uh, go in dry so that all the excess water can be removed. All right. Uh, um, almost uh precise. Okay. Okay. Um, can I hear from? Can I hear from uh, um, Lisa to avoid undesired reaction with the excess moisture? Right. Osmin. Okay. Good one. Because we need to avoid the reaction. Uh, uh, between the hot crucible with the excess moisture right? or, or with the uh, moisture inside the um, ambient, inside the environment. Okay, so uh, we need to directly uh, cool the crucible inside the desiccator, right? In the condition that we, uh, the, the desiccator will absorb all the moisture okay? and then uh, we let it cool and then we, we need to weigh it again. Okay, so the weight will be uh, precise okay all right thank you uh, for the answer and we can resume the video thanks Simmons. let's do that okay we have come to the end of the experiment okay as you can see from the beginning until the end uh, I think we have uh, tried our best to include all the process inside the video, right, Dr. Haas and Dr. Naji. Okay, uh, we showed it by ourselves. Dr. Haas is the camera woman during the shooting session, right? We and then we edit the video by ourselves and so on. This is our effort to to let you understand the experiment, all right? So I hope that you will ask some question here. Now we have come to uh, three uh, three thirty seven p.m. Okay, um, we have finished watching the experiment video. Now is the Q and A session. So I hope that you guys ask us uh, as uh, many questions as you want to ask, because it is for you to understand the process to prepare the lab report. Okay, please guys, open your mic, or you can uh, just uh, put it in the chat. But we hope so. You can open your mic. Ask us that. Ask us directly. Doctor, yes, yes. Who's that? Uh, I'm Govind Raj. Uh, yes, Govind Raj. My yes. question is, what type of metal can use for this technique other than nickel? Is that all that metal can be used? 
is that uh, all metals? What is the question? Uh, is that all the metals can be used uh, uh, to do the gravimetric analysis? All right. Um, for the gravimetric analysis, there are some metals that can be precipitated easily, right? Uh, especially the uh, transition metal, right? And for the trace metal, it is quite difficult, right? But it is very easy for the uh, heavy metal or the metals in the transition state, okay? And we have to know the uh, good or the uh, exact uh, precipitants for the specific metal, right? For this nickel, the uh, very suitable one is the MGH. If you learn gravimetric analysis, if you, I think you have done learn uh, analytical chemistry, right? Govind Raj, you are from biology or? Um, uh, I'm from chemical engineering, bioprocess. Doctor. Yes, you have learned last year, right? Yeah. Analytical chemistry. Or not yet? Yeah. In our last sem, uh, the, the second sem of our second year, which is the last sem right. we finished. Right. There are a topic in the traditional uh, or the conventional method. This is you learn volumetry and gravimetry, right? Yes, doctor. And for gravity, yes, for gravimetry specific, I think uh, uh, we have taught in the uh, in the uh, lectures. Okay. Nickel can be easily. Uh, uh, you know, um, measure using uh, DM, DMGH. It is very famous for nickel. But uh, if you ask all metals, uh, not all metals suitable using this gravimetric analysis. Okay. There are certain um, uh, precipitants that are very useful to measure some types of metal. Okay. Uh, because we have a modern technique to analyze the metal. Actually, we have atomic absorption spectrophotometer, right? And we have inductively coupled plasma. If you have, I think all these instruments you have learned, right? It is, this is the modern method. But for gravimetry, we need to uh, teach you as well because to uh, for you to understand uh, the uh, basic and bas the basic chemistry of uh, chemicals equation involved in the uh, reactions between uh, the metals and the precipit uh, the uh, precipitants. Okay, in the traditional methods that previously used by chemists okay before we have the modern instruments all right so i can i, I hope that dr naji and dr has can uh, add some more okay thank you for the question it's actually a very valid question right um okay to tell you frankly gravimetric is only one of the many methods available for quantitative determination of metals right one of the many right so it's actually the traditional one the easier one, not to say easier one, the, the cheaper one, I would say, right? The cheaper one. As long as the metal can be precipitated with whatever reagent, as long as we can produce a precipitate, right? That we can weigh, you can use gravimetric analysis. But of course, the more preferred kind of analysis is not gravimetric analysis because, yes, you can see, you can introduce a lot of errors in the analysis. For example, you may remove certain solutes during the transfer while checking the temperature, while stirring and all. So this will take up the solute, right? So the analysis may not as accurate as if you perform the analysis using other means such as the AAS, ICT and all, right? But the fundamental fact is that we are supposed to expose to you the classical example of how determination of metal can be done using chemical interactions between something that can produce precipitate. So I hope that answers the question. Right? Any other question? Thank you, Dr. Naji. Okay, any other questions? Kalau misalnya later on you can produce a, I mean a reagent that can precipitate with whatever metal, then you can use gravimetric, no problem. Okay, we have a question in the chat room. Doctor, the lab report must be the same as before, done by handwriting. Okay, I think this we can discuss right now, Dr. Najib, Dr. Haas. Previously, they, they can meet each other to do hand, handwritten lab report. But now, during, uh, you know, uh, due to the uh, some limitation, I think not some, a lot of limitation because they are at their home now. So what about the lab report? Previously, we decided handwritten. 
as long as there is no evidence of plagiarism, right? Yes. Meaning that you don't copycat your, I mean, your friend's report and put it as yours. I'm okay if the report is written using any other means. Okay. But you have to be truthful to yourself that you don't copycat. If, for example, we can see the evidence of copycatting, right? Perhaps we may want to sanction the reports and you have to justify your position. All right. As the coordinator, I would like to announce that you can do your lab report uh, using the uh, Microsoft Word or any type of, uh, you know, a type, uh, type uh, version of the uh, lab report. But, okay. Uh, I we will we don't ask you to do the turn it in test, but I will do it randomly, or uh, okay, any lab report that I have chosen from uh, all of you. Let's say we have hundreds lab report. I will do for about uh, twenty five of uh, twenty five percent of lab reports. Okay, randomly. So yeah, I found if I found the uh, you know the plagiarism. Okay, uh, for UTM we we. Uh, we have said the plagiarism is uh, some the, the Turnitin report that is higher than 20%. That is plagiarism, right? Is it acceptable, Dr. Najee? Higher than 19%. The higher than 19%, 19. right? Yeah. 19, 1, 9, okay? Because 20% is considered as plagiarism already for the thesis, okay? So higher than 19%, higher than 1, 9%. So we need, yes, uh, uh, higher than 19%, we need to ask you to do your lab report again or we need to take some actions, all right? Otherwise, we can penalize time. the marks. We may yeah. accept the report, but we may penalize the marks. Yeah, right. it will so, disturb, it will affect your mark. Maybe Dr. Faizon can consider, say for example, if the Tenini report ranges between 20 to 30, how many marks to be deducted? If it is 30 to 40, how many marks to be deducted and so on. It depends on your discretion. Dr. Faizwan? All right. So, uh, uh, like Dr. Naji said, okay, we will uh, penalize, we will uh, deduct your marks. Okay. So, uh, I hope so that uh, you do sincerely by your own. Okay. You can refer to any journals, any um, reference, but you need to rephrase. That is the uh, academic ethics, right? You need to rephrase what you get from another uh, uh, sources to discuss in your lab report. Even though you are now second year, in second year, okay, but uh, even uh, as early as first year, right? We need to uh, teach you, we need to guide you the proper way of doing the, uh, the, the uh, any report or any academic writings, right? So less than 90%. Uh, Okay, less than 20, but 19, less than 90%, sorry. Uh, can it still be handwritten and we will compile it together? Yes, of course. Okay. Uh, we can let you do the uh, type version of a uh, uh, lab report okay, using computer, but it is very, very, uh, you know, um, it is very, uh, very good if you do in the handwritten, in your with your own handwritten, and then you compile. Because... Uh, we have a lot of technology, right? You can you can scan it using your your uh, smartphone and give it to your friends, right? I use that uh, technology, okay, to communicate to each other. Okay, you can do the type version of that report, but you are very uh, what we call Dr. Naji, digalakkan, kan? Encourage. Advisable. Encourage, all right, to do your lab report using your own hand hand handwriting, handwritten lab report. Yes, type or handwriting report is acceptable. Okay. But remember, for the uh, type version, uh, I will do the random check of the Turnitin test. Okay, I will promise I do that. But how about the Jota book as it is included in the marks? All right. Um, Dr. Najee and Dr. Haas, about the Jota book. I think um, uh, for today, uh, we we uh, we can we decide that your attendance is your uh, the mark of your daughter book. Can can we do like that, Doctor Naji, Doctor House? I have no objection. All right, because 
um, previously we can see you can mark your jota book okay okay so now uh, we decide that your attendance is the marks of your jota book okay jota do we need to attach logbook with our report uh, no no need just send your report after this I, um, maybe one thing that I want to emphasize, Dr. Faizwan, Dr. Hasmira. Yeah, yes, yes. Right. Um, perhaps when you are preparing your report, it's nicer if you can discuss properly. Okay. Um, for yes. example, you you are going to report your mean plus minus standard deviations, right? In terms of the way and all, right? So if you can find um like a significant deviation in the concentration or in the in the weighing between one set of um replicate to another set of replicate maybe what you can do is you can discuss why do you find that okay try to find the source of errors indicate that in your report so that we know that you are trying to discuss something okay otherwise it's going to be a reproduction of data like that without any substantial discussion on the analysis itself so i would appreciate that kind of thing Okay, uh, thanks Dr. Naji for your advice. So uh, take note everyone in doing your lab report. Okay, we uh, we still open for the Q&A session. You ask us anything about this course, not only about the experiments. Please tell your friends, uh, maybe they have done experiment one, but um, you, you tell a friend that uh, the, the I will I will remind the group, but you have to tell your uh, group members, your friends that the attendance is compulsory if you want to get the uh, Jota book marked. Okay, you want to ask why the mixture need to be in acidic? All right, uh, Dr. Naji, why the mixture need to be in acidic? Saya jawab je, Asmira jawab pula lah. Dr. Has, Dr. Has. Why? Uh, acidic. Oh, okay. Uh, <laughs> yeah, actually, um, the reaction is very effective at um acidic form, right? Um, mm. in fact, I was expecting you guys to ask why nitric acid, not sulfuric acid. Mm. Okay, why not other types of acid, right? Why nitric acid? There must be something good about nitric acid, but. Since you do not ask, I leave it for you to discuss in your report. Okay, right. So um, it is actually about the ion the, the ionization form, right? The ionization form of the solute, right? So if it is acidic, and the what we call the ion that you're looking at is actually uh, an acidic ion, it's going to be easily um, uh, what we call um, excluded out from the uh, what we call from the reaction. But if it is not that is going to produce um, a salt rather than the ion that you want to analyze. So it depends on the species of ions that you are analyzing. So for this particular analysis, you are using nickel and DMGH and it works perfectly at acidic form. I hope that answers your question. But of course, after that, you have to basify it using ammonium hydroxide later on to get it before you can uh, actually estimate the weight. I hope that answers the question. Okay, um, I, I would like to uh, add some more. Mm. Okay, uh, if you remember, we are analyzing the uh, water samples, right? The water samples, okay? Meaning that in the water samples, it contains nickel, right? So we need to analyze how much nickel contains in, uh, in the water sample itself, right? Naturally, the, the water inside uh, the solutions they are not uh, in a free ion, okay? Not all in the type of free ion, okay? It is some of them are uh, in the form of precipitate originally, all right? Originally in the sample, it is precipitate by another uh, compound and the substance in the water because it is from the, uh, you know, from, for example, from the ambient environment, from the uh, rainwater or from the uh, river water, a lot of things inside the water. So the metal will, precipitate or attach with some other things. We need to use the nitric acid, okay, a strong oxidizing agent, right? Nitric acid to 
to make sure all the metals are freely um, available in the solution in the form of ion. Okay, and then we need to we need to ensure that nickel or, or the metals inside the sample react with our precipitate. If it is already in the form of precipitate with other other substance in the sample, so our maybe uh, our results uh, from this gravimetric analysis we only analyze the ion con the, the the nickels in the form of ion in the sample not the all not all the nickels in the sample because not all the metals including nickels are freely in the form of ion inside the sample we need to uh to to free them first in the sample okay in in what other solution what and uh, in whatever solution or what whatever sample that we need to analyze and then we cash back, we, we, we grab the, all the nickel back in our, uh, to our precipitants, all right? Uh, if you can understand, this is the method why we, uh, if you uh, do sampling to the environmental samples, river water, right, uh, uh, sea water and so on, we need to preserve as soon as possible using the nitric acid. The sample we need to preserve as soon as possible. Mm -hmm. The first one is to avoid the metals inside the this is for metal analysis to avoid the metal inside the sample precipitate with other compounds in the water or attach the, to the sample containers right so we need to ensure that the metals inside the sample is freely um, uh, in the form of ion inside the sample i hope that can answer your questions good question from aminul hakim okay boleh faham ke jawapan tu? Ha, boleh tak? Kita nak kena make sure nickel ataupun any metal dalam dalam sampel tu dalam keadaan free ion. Kita nak pisahkan dia. That's why kita kena ionisekan dia. dia. So that's kita why you bagi tengah, acid. Kita tengah berkumpul ramai-ramai kan. Tak ada social distancing tu. Hmm. Kita masukkan uh, nitric acid supaya ada social distancing. Okay? Hmm. Yeah, the charge, same principle the actually for the common extraction. Macam contoh, if you want to extract um acidic compound like malathion, the sample, you cannot put base. You tak boleh guna sodium hydroxide. You can acidify HCl ke sulfuric acid ke. So it is in ionized form, right? Kalau you give the base, dia akan jadi salt. You tak nak salt tu untuk analysis. So itu pasal you guna acid. Ah, uh, tapi I haven't given you the answer why nitric acid, not sulfuric acid, right? So I want you to find out why. <laughs> okay, who can answer that? Why nit nitric acid instead of sulfuric acid? Dua dua tu acid kuat. Kenapa kena yeah. guna nitric acid? Uh, tak apalah tulis dalam report nanti. Kita tengok jawapan dia. <laughs> Nak Google dulu ke? <laughs> Nak Google pun kena tahu Google tak? apa kalau tu kata tak jumpa jawapan nanti. <laughs> ha, kena tahu Google tu nak kena tahu Google apa tu. Ke ada orang boleh jawab? Ada orang jawab boleh juga tu bagus juga kalau ada orang boleh jawab. Anybody? Or you you want to wait for Dr. Najee's explanation? <laughs> Tak apalah kita tengok report nanti insyaAllah. Ah, okay. <laughs> tengok report nanti. Hmm, okay. Any other question? Okay. Another question? I promise that we end at 4pm. So we have more three, 3 minutes more. I would like to remind all of you to feel the attendance. That's why I keep on, uh, you know, reminding uh, all of you to, to feel the attendance because there's some marks in it, all right? Any other question? Tak ada kot. Okay lah tu. Hmm. Okay, jelas eh semua. Okay, we have 137 uh, participants and also we have 137 response from the uh, Google form. Okay. Because, but, but some of you have some of you have left the uh, the the webex session already. I I assume that it's because of the internet line problem and so on. I hope so. Okay, but um, we really want you to uh, attend this lab session from beginning until the end. Okay, 
uh, it is not difficult. Just sit on your chair, right? <laughs> Watch uh, and then answer the question that we we ask you, right? And we hope that this can, um, you know, actually can at least uh, replace 80% uh, of the real rap session, right? You can watch the video and you can ask us a question. We can ask you to, to, to ensure that you understand the process and so on. We also include the lab safety uh, question inside the uh, session, okay? To, to let you know what is the precaution step you need to take during the lab session, okay? Because the lab is the most dangerous place, okay? Uh, in the uh, working environment, right? In the, you know, in the study, your studying process, Okay, the lab is the most dangerous place, especially chemistry lab. <laughs> we have uh, all type of hazards there. <laughs> okay. Um, I think that you don't have any questions anymore. So anything else, you can just text uh, in the uh, WhatsApp group. Okay. Anytime. And I will answer it as soon as possible. Inshallah. Okay. I hope that... Uh, for the first experiment, you get the knowledge, all right? You get the information, uh, uh, you know, uh, that can replace our uh, physical adaptation at least, okay? 80% of that, all right? So um, I hope that you can prepare a lab report and uh, I will uh, uh, upload the uh, simulation result, okay, by today, and then you can start doing your lab report, okay? So how, uh, how I did uh, the simulation result is I just refer to the previous uh, lab session that I've done in the previous years before the pandemic, the real one. So I choose the best one for you to do the lab report. Okay. Thank you so much. Uh, we, uh, do you have anything to add, Dr. Naji? Okay. Thank you so much, Dr. Naji. Dr. Haas? No? Okay. Thank you so much to Dr. Naji and Dr. Haas for this session. Okay. For tomorrow... Okay, we have the second experiment, experiment two, right? For those who have not done yet experiment two, you are compulsory to attend. And for tomorrow's session, you will uh, you will meet uh, another instructors. Okay, I'm I'm sure that I I will be there because I'm the host for tomorrow as well. But uh, the instructors will be Dr. Muhammad Afik, Muhammad Huri, Mr. Daniel, and also our new lecturer, Dr. Aida. Okay. Uh, but most of the content will be provided by Dr. Afi and Mr. Daniel. Okay. Thank you so much, everyone. And stay safe uh, till we meet again in another experiment. Okay. Bye-bye. Assalamualaikum. Thank you, Doctor. This is the most exciting part of the lecture, Dr. Naji. Everyone is talking. <laughs> Thank you, Dr. Yes. Glad to hear your voice. Most welcome, everyone.